What's going on guys? My name is Arrow and in today's video we are talking about my second build of the league, Ethereal Knives Cold Crit Assassin. This one's a lot of fun, let's get into it. Let me start with a disclaimer. This build is not complete. Uh, I wanted to achieve a goal with this character, which was to blast juiced tier 16 maps. And once I got my gear to the point where I could do that very comfortably without dying, I pretty much stopped upgrading. That being said, this build can go so, so much farther if you want to invest into it. I did not spend much at all on this. The most expensive things on here are the heat shiver with the helm enchant was two divines. That might be hard to get. You might have to pay someone to do that. A void battery, which they've come way down in price and the plus one power charge shield, which has also come down in price. So really you could put this entire build together as is for less than 10. This build blasts maps. It is so, so good. We did a ton of breach, a ton of legion and easily full clearing legions. Uh, and you can make it much, much stronger. So throughout the video, when I talk about the gear, I'll talk about the things that you can do instead to make the build better than I made it. Disclaimer number two, this is a mapper. The way that I've currently built the character, it is designed just to map. It can't kill bosses. It's not because it doesn't have the damage, but because a lot of the effects that make your character stronger, so gaining frenzy charges, I only have on kill because I didn't feel like I needed to boss with it because I didn't want to. So I never went and solved those problems. But again, as I talk about the gear pieces, I'll talk about ways that you can solve problems this build to make it a better boss killer. And the damage is there. So if you want to kill bosses, you absolutely can. You just have to solve some problems. So one of the problems that you need to solve if you want to make this an all content build and not just a mapper is leech. I currently get leech on kill for my boots, but there are tons of ways to solve this. You could get a Doriani uh, large cluster that gives you elemental damage get uh, gloves that have cold conversion there and also get some leech there um, instead of using the Grim Sorrow gloves which are 1C. You could get a Vitality Watcher's Eye. We, we already run Vitality, so get life on hit or leech there or both. There are lots of ways to solve it but if you do want to kill bosses you have to solve that problem. Uh, number two is Frenzy Charges. You could get a Ferals or you could get a Frenzy Charge on hit influence chest which you could get a lot of other things on there too you could get base crit you could get additional curse things that would give you huge huge additional damage i didn't do any of that i was feeling kind of lazy i made a very big energy shield invasion chest and i was like this is good enough i'm not dying in maps i'm doing plenty of damage i can fully charge the crucible so i just didn't want to upgrade any further but if you wanted to do all content with this build you're going to need to generate frenzy charges in some way. So that's a couple of the ways that you can do it. Uh, we just use Ice Bite. It gives you frenzy charges when killing shattered enemies. While you're mapping, you always have that up. Uh, you go and kill the map boss. You still have all your charges from while you're mapping. You can get charge duration from the charge mastery, which will make it so your charges last twice as long. And if you're ever finding that your charges are falling down too quickly while you're mapping, maybe you're a slow looter or, uh, you know, you spend too much time getting the altar mods so your charges never fall off while you're mapping um i didn't find that that was necessary but i'm a pretty quick player i have a pretty strict loot filter so just something to keep in mind if you uh if you find that your charges are falling off i also didn't get 100 percent spell suppression i uh felt like i wasn't getting hit enough to really worry about investing into it again a bunch of my gear pieces are trash i could put spell suppression on them but i haven't so i just want you guys to have an idea of what needs to be solved if you want to play this build. That being said, even as is with all of its flaws, this this build is so fun. It is screen shattering. It is uh, no aiming, which to me was one of the most important things about playing this build. I did not want to aim. And uh, it's, just a, it's a super fun build to play. So I actually would love to see if some of you guys want to take this to the next level to see how much damage you can get. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. So let's dive into uh, here in the gems and talk about how this build functions. We're going to go through our gear and talk about our decisions. So let's start with uh, the core of the build, which is the weapon and the shield. Void batteries can roll a very strong mod that is in Crucible that I actually do not have on mine, but I do have it on the shield. And that mod is 15% increased damage per endurance, frenzy, or power charge. We don't generate endurance charges, which if you uh, want to min-max this build, you should definitely find a way to do. Um, but this mod is incredibly powerful for a build that gets a lot of charges. So 15% increased damage for, uh, I think we have eight total of each charge after the minus one uh, power. 
from this mod. And uh, that's 240% increased damage on our shield just from this node. We also get another incredibly powerful node. Cover 3% of life when you suppress spell damage. I crafted this shield myself by slamming these mods together onto the shield until I hit it. This is a plus one power charge shield. Uh, I crafted this myself using some essences until I hit something decent, and then I just decided that I was done. So nothing too crazy on the shield. Uh, we also have life here. This is nice, 80 life is a ton, but 20% reduced damage doesn't feel great. And then this is random, I, <laughs> I don't want this, but it's what I ended up with and I got sick of, of trying to make this shield because I got pretty unlucky. We have a little bit less max fire and a little bit more max lightning. But for the shield, we effectively just uh, rolled until we hit a couple of useful mods and uh, the plus one power charge is a big benefit. On the void battery, our tree is uh, not great. A little bit of fire damage to spells. This is good for enabling Sadist, which is the cluster jewel that says if you've ignited recently, you uh, increase damage. Uh, we have fire damage elsewhere, so this isn't even necessary. 18% um, more cast speed and less global damage. This is a buff to our damage. It's not a huge buff, but it's nice. And I didn't feel like spending a ton of currency re-rolling void batteries until I hit something better. Uh, lastly, here we have increased effective arcane surge on you, which is effectively useless. Uh, nothing else on here is is worth taking. So this is a this is a bad tree uh, for a void battery. You can definitely definitely upgrade this a lot. The helmet. This is going to be the hardest thing for people to get. Uh, for those of you who don't like to run uh, lab or have someone run lab for you, this could be difficult. Ek fires projectiles in a circle. In my opinion, mandatory. I don't like aiming. Uh, the point of this build was to not aim. And heat shiver is a massive amount of damage for us because we are always freezing. We have so, so much flat damage that we're always freezing. I would say buy a heat shiver, pay somebody to run it through lab and get this enchant for you. It's worth it. If you play this build, you need this. Uh, we use Badge of the Brotherhood with allocating overcharge on it, uh, which is plus one power charge. And this is just super strong. Increased effective elusive. Uh, we also get elusive effect on the assassin. So we have a ton of elusive effect, which means we are avoiding damage all the time. We are avoiding attack damage. We are avoiding spell damage. Pretty much anything that can hit you, you can avoid. And when you avoid something, you take no damage from it. Stack that with our spell suppress chance and our uh, evasion. And we're pretty tanky. We have a, a fairly large life and ES pool total and petrified blood on top of that. So we take life it's as a dot, which we recover very quickly. So I did not find that I died on this build pretty much ever outside of uh, really gnarly crucibles or putting myself into a really bad situation. I tend to like flame dash into the center of packs a lot, but we leveled easily to 94. The chest, uh, this is a really nice chest in that it gives us 1800 evasion and 400 ES, but it doesn't really do anything for us. You can get a lot of cool mods as I talked about in the intro. Uh, we have life, we have some res, uh, the intelligence doesn't matter, and the implicits you can get a lot of good stuff. You can get hatred aura effect, grace aura effect, grit multi, lots of fun stuff there. Our rings just solving problems. We get res here, we get life strength. Minus mana cost on both rings is important to get your mana cost low. Basically the same thing. We got some life, some ES, uh, some res. The gloves, these were 20 chaos. Uh, Herm Sorrows convert 100% of our physical damage to cold. You can go rare here and get 60% and then get the other 40% on the mastery on the tree. But then you'd have to find another way to curse. So this is just a super easy, cheap solution to convert all your damage to cold and get a curse. Our belt, another problem solver. It's just life and resist. Corrupted blood jewel in here. And then our boots, these are terrible. What I would re actually recommend you do here is get shock avoidance and then use the storm shroud jewel because you don't really need anything from your boots. The action speed is nice. The fizz is extra, barely anything at all. Um, but you could get some more spell suppress here and you could get full ailment avoidance from your boot. I really, really recommend doing it. Really talk about the flask uh, onslaught. Awesome. Get some cast speed in there. A bunch of move speed on our quicksilver. Um, diamond flask that has evasion and jade flask. Crit. I want to get our crit really high. Crit, the more we are shattering. The life flask I almost exclusively used when I had a bleed on me, which I thought about trying to solve by maybe grabbing the bleed avoidance here and then maybe a vistule that has the rest of the bleed avoid. Uh, I ran out of points. The tree tends to kind of path all over the place here. There may be a more efficient way to do this. 
I don't love all of this pathing up here, but power charge and the power charge stuff here is nice. So there might be a better way to do this and then take this bleed avoidance because then you could drop this flask entirely uh, because we pretty much never need it because we heal our ES so quickly with ghost dance sources of recovery that uh, yeah, it's just pretty much for bleeds, which sucks. It doesn't feel good to use it for just that. Um, I have a bad uh, jewel here. It's got blanketed snow and sadist on it and nothing else, which means we have to we, we lose a node traveling this way. And that's why I don't have repeater yet. It's like ton of extra damage so another problem to solve get a better uh, large cluster jewel than i had um, if you're going to use sadis just make sure that somewhere on your jewels that you have some lightning damage and some fire damage that way you will crit you will be doing chills shocks and ignites and you'll be getting all of this extra damage we are low life or petrified blood so we use pain attunement the star of this build is the caster mastery let me, let me pause a minute to talk about the caster mastery. 25% chance to open nearby chests when you cast a spell. We cast super fast. We have our move skill, EK cast really fast. We have vortex on left click. You're always casting a ton of spells, which means all the time you're opening nearby chests. But it's not just chests. This opens the legion boxes when we're doing legion. This opens breach hands, which is incredible because for some reason I can't click them. I I spend half of a breach clicking the hands. So this is, you just shield charge past it, EK once or twice, and it, it opens right up. Super, super convenient. If you are playing a spell-based build, this is mandatory. Biggest quality of life upgrade I've ever seen on a build is to just open all the chests. So highly, highly recommend that. Let's talk about the ascendancy a little bit. Uh, these are all no-brainer nodes for me. Uh, you pretty much don't have any choices here. Mistwalker, amazing. We don't take damage from crits. On a build that it doesn't have huge layered defenses, not taking crits means the amount of spike damage you take is effectively reduced to zero. When your spike damage is reduced, it's a lot easier to maintain your life in ES pool. It's a lot easier to recover through the hits that you take. So Mistwalker is amazing. It also gives us elusive effect, which makes us avoid even more damage. Then these two, the, the staple of every power charge stacker, uh, gotta have these two. And then lastly, opportunistic, 20% reduced damage taken while there are two rare or unique enemies nearby. During Crucible, that's all the time. This is Fortify, but also against Dots. Opportunistic is fantastic. I've been raving about this for leagues. People think Assassin is bad. Assassin is not bad. Opportunistic is fantastic. Damage from crits cannot be reflected. We don't get to 100% crit, so we can't really make use of that but then 25% more damage when there is one rare or unique enemy nearby. So anytime you're fighting a map boss or the last you know, juicy unique in a crucible, you get 25% more damage. Opportunistic is one of the best nodes of any ascendancy. Uh, it cannot be overstated how powerful it is. As far as our skills, we use shield charge and frost blink. This allows us to move incredibly quickly. And when you shatter, you tend to kill a lot of things around you. So you gotta move quick to get to the next pack. Uh, we fly around the map with the, this combo. We get a, a bunch of attack speed uh, from using faster attacks on our shield charge, but also from also from things like Onslaught and Vol Haste. We use Vol Haste and Vol Grace. I basically save these for crucibles and boss fights. Uh, you don't really need them at any other time, but they're really, really nice to have as a big boost to your character. We have a Vortex on our left click. Uh, this is not too exciting. It gives us bone chill on enemies. Uh, I probably should flip these gives us a little bit more damage on single target. I'm gonna go through the rest of the gems here. We have a cast one damage taken immortal call setup. Uh, that also has tornado. Tornado is just a single target damage boost. You take a little bit of damage, you send a tornado out and then you can hit it and it reflects damage to the boss. There's frost blink. Uh, in our shield, we have our, our life res reservation setup. Uh, we have anomalous arrogance, which was not too expensive. I think this was like 40 C. Uh, it gives us increased life reservation efficiency that allows us to get to 49% uh, of our life reserved so that when we cast, it's, it spends a little bit of our life and keeps us always low life for pain entombment for 30% more damage. We also have a vitality here and a herald device, which I bricked. In our gloves, we have haste, faster attacks, and shield charge. The Val haste, we don't use the haste portion. I started with it, but then I switched to grace and grace feels a little bit better because we do get a bunch of evasion, so Grace obviously sends that much, much higher. I think our evade chance is 80%. That's pretty high. 
with a watcher's eye, you could get that up much higher. Then we use a portal. You could put something like uh, increased duration here instead to make your vol haze last longer. That always feels pretty nice. And then we have a four link aura set up here. Petrified blood. Which I also need to clip hatred, uh, grace and vol grace, and then inlight. And enlighten is not too expensive. It's about 1.3. I think I spent 1.1 on it. Um, but it allows us to get all of our auras in and feel nice and cozy with how much mana we have left. You will find that when you have all your frenzy charges up, you're fully buffed and you're casting pretty fast, that you can run out on single target. So ideally, you'd like to get a little bit more on reserve mana, but I didn't find it to be too big of a problem. However, if you want to do bosses with this, that's another problem that you might need to solve. Our main six link, we have Ethereal Knives. Uh, I don't even have any quality on this. Power Charge on Crit, Inspiration, Increased Critical Damage, Trinity, because we are doing Fire and Cold very consistently, Ice Bite Support, which gives us our Frenzy Charges. That's going to do it for me. If you do play this build and you have questions about how you can upgrade it even more, please come to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. I'm live almost every single day and I'd be happy to help you make this build even better. If you want to support me financially, you can click the link down below to join my Patreon for as little as $3 a month. You can help me chase my dreams of becoming a full-time content creator. If you want to support me for free, like this video, give it a comment, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I already have some more content that's going to be coming very soon. So subscribe so you don't miss anything. As always, take care.